along with my partner, I run an urban agriculture business in Victoria, BC called City Harvest. And I guess I'm bringing the fantasy to the city a little bit in that we're, we're farming in the city. That's what we're all about. So the acronym SPIN stands for Small Plot Intensive Farming. And it's a farming methodology developed for sub-acre sites. While it's not limited to city centers, that's where I believe its most exciting and rewarding potential lies, bringing it close to the population that's looking for food to eat. Compared to conventional agricultural practices in much of North America today, spin farming removes two of the larger barriers to entering the field, that being the high cost of land, along with the capital required to set up a farm infrastructure. For us to set up our farm, it required us to trade in our vehicle. We had a station wagon. We needed a van to be able to transport things like the rototiller. Rototiller was the next purchase that we had to make. We pr purchased a used rototiller, a rear tine rototiller. The thing that makes your life a lot easier is to have a good refrigeration system. So we have an old Pepsi cooler in our garage now. It's something that situates itself very close to markets, being growing food in the city where we have our market pretty much right next door. It's environmentally focused, recognizing that the health of humanity is symptomatic of our environmental health and it's entrepreneurially driven. What I'd like to do is just give you a bit of an idea of myself and the background that I come from and, and why I decided to become a farmer. My partner Martin and I were just on the heels of completing degrees in environmental education and communication and for us it was really important that we lived a life consistent with the values that we had. We had a young family and we'd been doing, both of us had been doing contract work in the environmental field. And it just seemed like an opportunity to kind of clear the slate and look at, okay, if we're planning what life is going to look like for the next five years, what does it look like? And so kind of at the top of the list, the wish list was just if it could be more focused around our family, that would be better than going to jobs that took us out of our home nine to five, five days a week and whatnot. So that was, that was on the list. And we had purchased a home in the city of Victoria, and so we knew that we were committed to staying there for a while. For myself, food has just been a long-time um, issue of importance in my life. I see it as, as being connected to um, our economic situation, our environmental situation, our social situation, our cultural situation. I've been passionate about food for a long time, so this was kind of a natural in for me. When I got into spin farming, it was a wonderful realization to, to notice that not only was it a lot of physical work that I was doing, but it was also very mentally challenging. And I like the rewards of using kind of both aspects of my being. Helge was talking about the universe conspiring. And for us, the universe conspired in terms of making urban agriculture uh, a legal, a thorny legal issue in our own municipality of Oak Bay where we live. And that was because we discovered shortly after starting the business that what we were doing, commercial agriculture, was actually illegal where we live. It really was the opportunity for us because I was working one of our front yard garden sites one morning and a woman was coming to visit the person who lived at the house that I was farming at. And she quickly became interested in me picking the spinach off their front yard and asked what I was doing. And I just so happened to tell her that, yeah, we have this challenge right now and that what we're doing is illegal. And I feel fortunate that where I live, there's a high interest not only in food, food security, local foods, but also there's, there's a qu quite a high level of literacy regarding most environmental issues. And so she just said, well, actually, I'm a publicist. And, I think there's some interest in the media for a story like this, and that was just the opening in terms of us doing a lot of advocacy work and education around the fact that we all place a great importance around getting local food, but here we can't even grow it and, and get rid of it or sell it in, in a way that's, that's legal. Here. That was our opportunity, and it's enabled us to basically double our business in a year. Um, we've been able to shrink the geographic reach of our business significantly over the last year by clarifying exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for yards right within our neighborhood. We are entering our second year of business now, and I expect that we'll have about 18,000 square feet in production. To give you an idea, 
a half an acre is about 22,000 square feet, so we'll be just under half an acre in size by the end of this year. What we were doing last year was selling predominantly to different wholesale accounts. We've got some great options in our city for people who are very supportive of local foods, but what I came to realize is that because we're such a small farm by comparison to other farmers in the area, and that we sell a very low qual uh, low quality, low volume, high quality, hand tended crops that we really do need to charge a premium for what we're growing, and there's a benefit too of relating directly with our customers. I was I was learning some of the history of the organics movement, and it, they were talking about there was a time when these farmers were just looking to feed their community members and to get feedback directly from the people that they were looking to nourish and that's something that we're able to do by selling directly to our customers and they can see that for us to charge for example three dollars for a head of lettuce it's because we've just tended that lettuce for the last three months and that that's what our actual cost of production is it's not that we're we're certainly not driving fancy cars we're not going on long vacations but there is a cost of food that we're not paying the true cost of food in, in our society right now. And I think that's something that does need to change. So I know that a lot of you are here to get some of the, the nuts and bolts in terms of this or farming possibly being a career. So to give you just a bit, bit of an idea of some of the concepts that we wrestle with as spin farmers, we deal with a standard size bed, which makes it very practical when you're going and looking at different yards in the city. And as I've touched on already the, uh, the idea of high and low value crops and deciding your crop repertoire with considerations like how long a crop will be in the ground and how many crops you can get in a certain bed over a season. We also deal with relay cropping which is the sequential growing of land or growing of crops on the same plot of land throughout a season and we'll grow some crops intensively which will mean that there will be at least three crops growing on that same bed in a growing season. And that brings us to land allocation, the importance of being able to look at your farm at the beginning of the season and decide what your, your work level, what sort of work level you can maintain, the needs of your crops, how to care for your land sustainably in terms of rotating through different <coughs> crop families, and then also growing a variety of crops to fulfill your customers' needs. By putting these practices or these concepts into practice that we can earn significant incomes, there are several spin farmers out there who are earning over $50,000 on half an acre of land. And it's, it's something that I believe is, is redefining farming for this century in North America. However, that said, it's something that's going on around the world in many other countries, the idea of growing food in urban centers. So by shrinking the loop between uh, farmers and consumers who are our neighbors, we're able to fuel a regional economy, protect the environment better, improve our food security and build community which I think is a really significant part of this story. Mm -hmm.